Mr. O'Connor is our managing director at Murphy Lake Bank with over 20 years of experience in investing, investment banking and finance. His career focus has primarily been on mid-market healthcare information and technology merger and acquisition transactions. He has directed over 30 major transactions. Mr. O'Connor will discuss the relationship between large medical companies and small startups in addition to the importance of company mergers and acquisitions for medical entrepreneurs. Please join me in welcoming Mr. O'Connor. Want some partners 
It's not to mention who they turn to. They're not familiar with Wall Street. It's a very different place to be today uh, than it is when they do their business. I'll get to that a little more later. Uh, we look at ourselves a little more specialized. And there's lots of banks and lots of different things. And we focus, I'd all focus on the healthcare space because we know that space. And part of what I think when you, you hire a bank is they really need to know the landscape. They're not out there doing manufacturing deals and how they're doing buying buildings. They need to know the landscape. So we have deep expertise in the space. When the asked me to speak, one of the interesting things is that there's this tremendous amount of opportunity in healthcare because healthcare is not just one blanket, it's a thousand different niches. You know, it's, it's, I'm doing a deal right now for, for, for a, an EHR business started by a, a physician. So most of our clients are physicians, PharmDs, even nurses, and business people who know the space, have deep domain expertise, see problems in the space, or pain points in the space, and leave and solve those problems. So the electronic health records market, for example, has been out of care for 20 years. A lot of it's driven by the ACA, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it. But they get a lot of incentives. Many of them use trillions of dollars to help people start this and digitize health records. And one client I'm working with was a physician who went out and looked at what what was out in the marketplace for his own practice and hated what he saw. So he, between patients and at night, he started his own EHR business, knew nothing about the business, knew nothing about the program. He took the program as far as and started a business that worked for his private practice. And he, then he shared that with his fellow clinicians. And then had a eureka moment, figured he could make a significant income on the side while practicing medicine. And that business turned into a tremendous business probably worth 50 to 80 million dollars going forward. So there's, and there's, there's lots of different issues. So we look at it from the provider side, which is your know, hospitals and the clinicians. There's the payer side. We're doing a deal for the payers right now. It's a BPO that's helping the payer side of the market during what's called consumerization of healthcare. I'm sure you know there's tremendous change going on in healthcare today, rapid change going on for lots of different reasons, the age of America, and consumerization of America because of the cost. And they're helping the payers outreach to, to, to consumers but they're doing it at a much more efficient rate than anybody out there. Five years ago, they had zero revenue. Today, they have 60 million of revenue because they're doing something different, doing something unique in the marketplace today. There's lots of different, in all these niches, there are winning solutions by entrepreneurs who eventually will want to you know, either grow into their own company and be strategics, or they'll want to exit to a private equity group, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, or a strategic buyer over time. What's the role of Wall Street today, right? So the real role of Wall Street today is, a, is an advisor, the Johnson Mansion, is, is early stage investing, is capital raising, is growth capital, is complete exits. But the role of Wall Street really should be, I think Jonathan did a very good job on as a seasoned trusted advisor. They know the landscape, they know what they're doing, they can efficiently help an entrepreneur and their family find the right thing. And we get paid based on success, actually. So we don't get people I'm sure Jonathan does the same way. We actually don't get the monthly retainer, which would be nice. So if we're a cash flow basis, we actually get paid when the deal is done. So they get $50 million. We're getting 2 to 3% of that money going forward. We have a big philosophy, and I, I talk to entrepreneurs, they say, I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs I talk to say, why don't I just do it myself? I'm the smartest guy, I built a $70 million company. Why don't I need to hire an advisor? Why don't I need to pay an advisor a million, two million bucks to help me through the process? It's a very different process than money. I can't tell you how many guys come to me after they failed in the process and say, help me through this process. It's a very different animal when you're talking to people who have trillions of dollars at disposal and they're financial sharks. If you don't know what you're doing, they'll take advantage of you. So we, get, we recommend everybody get some advisor, but the hospital should be great, or somebody else. So why the healthcare market? I think we all know the healthcare market is 19 percent of GDP. It's a growing space, the aging of America. Anything to do with the aging of America is a great space to be in today. This cost is un unsustainable. The cost of healthcare is unsustainable today. That's what's driving a lot of this. And you'll see, the, obviously, the big payer in the market today is the government. Medicare, Medicaid, it's only get more in the marketplace today. The percent of people who are going to be 65 years and older is just tremendous. We're doing a couple of deals with post acute space. Really fascinating space. You see a lot of innovation, a lot of people training. You think, well, why is healthcare, and I'll get to it in a minute, why is healthcare so interesting? Healthcare is about 10, 15 years behind the financial industry going from paper and data into software. It's amazing to us. You got the Bloomberg's of the world, there's no bloomer in the healthcare space, but it's happening as we speak. A lot of that's been driven by the cost. 
that's costing us today. From a general admin M&A market trend, we run the seventh year of an M&A cycle. And it's getting a little long in the tooth, but the truth of the industry is great companies year in, year out, doing something different than great guys. Healthcare market, and so I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm mostly focused on health IT, health information, and big data type companies across the spectrum. It's, if you're doing something different than HIT today, look at some of these prices, look at some of the different What's interesting, I'm not, I'm not, how many of you here in finance? Anybody here in finance? Any MBAs in the audience? Okay, so there's two, there's two types of, what I think is really interesting and maybe would have helped me if I had known this initially. Um, they're strategic buyers, they're big companies, but you might know their name. On the flip side, there's something called private equity, which is different, they changed the name over the years. They call leverage buyout artists, whatever the case may be. Private equity is a nice, nicer term uh, for, for the industry, but they have a trillion dollars at their disposal. And so what they do with this money, they get from pension funds, from Duke endowments, from, from um, other businesses that devote a, a small 1% of their endowment to high-risk investment. The, the private equity firms, which is usually a small group of guys, mostly men, 95% men, unfortunately, which is changing as we speak, well, they'll, they'll take that money and they'll invest it in companies looking to help them grow and get an above, an adjusted, above average return on their money. The very smart guys that can't run the business, but they, the better ones, if you look at them, can spot winners from all the past. So let's do two types of buyers. You look at some of these prices here. You know, we've done some of these deals, but today, we've heard it well, years ago, the Francisco Partners, this uh, inside multi billion dollar funds looking to help entrepreneurs grow. And growth is a key determinant of valuation today. You gotta grow. I'm not talking 5% growth. 30, 40, 50% growth. The business I'm doing at a DPO, they're growing at 60% a year, year in, year out, five years old. We also do business in training, healthcare is a big space where there's lots of training deals, because healthcare professionals are lifelong ones. Well, the best thing maybe to give us would be some examples of some of the deals we do. And I give this conversation to the boards all the time. Um, but here's a list of deals. But maybe there's one on the bottom, which is uh, MedWorks. MedWorks was started by Dan Matlow, who's an entrepreneur, and he, there's a lot of discussion in hospitals, why are patients there so long, where do you know, where are they in the stage? We started a business, went out to, and John mentioned a lot of times businesses start through either their own capital or we call friends and family. It's, it's John mentioned, it's very hard to find money for a startup today. I mean, very early startups. Today. There's a lot of friends and family around. They'll talk to their cousins, they'll mortgage their house, they'll, the wives of the works, whatever the case may be, you will find the money through friends and family. And he started this business called Networks in Toronto. It helped through clinical criteria to determine where, where a patient is in a hospital and where should they be based on clinical criteria. And over 10 years, most of our deals are not overnight successes. Most of the people we're selling, it's a 10, 15 year business. They go from zero to 30 to 40 to 50 million dollars in revenue and they talk. So he started this business raise some money, actually it's a small cap raise in Toronto, they have a, a venture exchange up there. I know Dan a long time, I'm fortunate to turn around time in my deals is a very long time. I took me to an entrepreneur, and five to seven years later, we're doing a deal with him. So I spent a lot of my time meeting entrepreneurs and traveling to get to know businesses and be helpful, helpful to them all the time. So when Dan wanted to sell the business, we met his board, which is friends and family, and we did what we call a auction process. An auction. We're a huge believer in competition meets high value. Okay, so we went out to 30 to 40 parties on a timeline, gave them all the same information, and made them do a two-stage bidding process. So, so on our timeline, so we can determine really based on valuation who's the right party. And our job, we always say our job is once we get the second valuation, is to help raise the price and lower the risk. So we sold that basis for 30 to 40 million dollars. Uh, then I got a nice payday, and so did the investors. So I've got a few more. I thought it was a deal here at Therapy Research, I thought I might find interesting. It was started by Jeff Dillon, who was a farm dealer. And Jeff's mission in life was to raise the profile of pharmacists. Pharmacists are very well educated people, but not pill counters. Right? So Jeff started a business with his wife in San Francisco. It was an evidence based protocol solution to help keep pharmacists informed, not what the drug rep tells you, but what you should know. Okay, it started like that, then it turned into software. The magic of Jeff's business, he, he was the only business that had a hole through the firewall at CVS, 
Rite Aid, and Walgreens. And they all trusted him, but he did, right? So 10, 15 years later, just got a business, 50% EBITDA margins, fantastic lifestyle business, comes to work at Temple Stone and Spike. Nice family lifestyle business. Realizes, like many entrepreneurs do, that they can only take it so far. He was 30, 40 million in revenue, so he couldn't get it to 150 of revenue. So he knew he needed help. And like a lot of entrepreneurs, he said, well, I want to sell to a strategic. They've been calling me for years. They know me. I've been winning against them. And we said, that's great. We know them. You're actually right. But also, don't, why not think about private equity? Because what's private equity? Private equity, as I mentioned, are, are pools of capital, some very smart guys. Their only business is doing deals and making risk-adjusted return to other people's money, and they keep a percentage of that, and they give most of their money back uh, to the endowments, whether it's Yale, Harvard, even Duke, I'm sure has an allocation. Typically, 1% of their endowment goes to risk-adjusted private equity returns. So we went out to the market with Gary Depp had a, a price uh, in mind. He wanted to sell his business for it. We said, fine. We always read, read that up front. We do a lot of work up front uh, with, with entrepreneurs, make sure on the same page. And we went out to market and we talked to all the usual suspects, those guys that he'd never heard of. And we introduced him to a firm called Francisco Parkins, which is a technical private equity firm with $3 million of their disposal based in San Francisco. They hit it off, they believed in his vision, and they paid a whopping triple digit price for that business in the hundreds of millions of dollars for that business. Jeff um, initially wanted to sell 100%, but at a great price. He retired it at the close, stayed on the board. Kept 20%, and that 20% hypothetically would be worth more than what he initially sold the business for the first time around. It's called the second bite of the apple. They gave him the growth capital, they bring in people, they have relationships, they can bring in other people to help him get that business to 150 million dollars. It's a very good firm for me. One of the deals I'll close with is a company called Up to Date. Anybody here use Up to Date? Okay, so Up to Date is a fantastic business. Okay, it's ubiquitous in the hospitals, and it started by, it started by Burton Rose. In the problems at heart. Okay, so where does this great idea that textbooks should not be books, they should be electronic textbooks back in the day? You go to all the big strategic say, who go in? Who needs that? If we're selling textbooks, we're making a lot of money. Okay, so Bert says, okay. Okay, still has, but he's a visionary. Entrepreneurs are risk takers, right? Usually not the people that go along, come along, they gotta they leave a good job. So he goes out and raise some money for some friends and family. And starts this business. It was never, it was always electronic. It's what today would be called SaaS enabled solutions. Back in the 1970s, early 70s, no one spoke like that. So, first starts this business year in, year out, goes to physicians at Johns Hopkins and Harvard and Baylor and all these hospitals, and as Don mentioned, finds KOLs, finds, public, finds advocates who believe in this, and he was very smart, so he gave it away free at the university to get people training on it. And then when he went out to practice, they, they demanded it. And his model was they would pay $199 a year per student. And he never changed the price in 15 years. It shocked me, of course, but didn't change the price. So, um, so he starts the business, goes position by position, position by position, over the years. And obviously all those big strategics, five to seven years later, start knocking on his door. And he was a nephrologist, and then he worked his way to internal medicine. He had a couple of things up to date, but they, it's really a, they have 400 physicians who do cards on subjects. And it's an evidence-based protocol that someone comes into your office, and you can know very quickly what a diabetic, overweight man needs. They can give you, quickly give you uh, the evidence-based protocols. And then if you want, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's ubiquitous today. It's 95% you know, penetration in the physician office worldwide. That's today. Seven years later, they start knocking on his door. He's not interested in selling. So 15 years later, <clears throat> business has grown tremendously. It's ubiquitous in the it, it doesn't want to sell. I mean, it's, it's a good business. They're making, making a lot of money in the business. But for whatever reason, the board decides to sell. We did visit a bird and his CEO. We hired good people around him. It wasn't his skill set to run a business. So we hired a good CEO. We hired a good CFO. We hired a good marketing person, some good salespeople. Mostly physicians. Nick Fazzo, who is the CEO today, is an internist and is a brilliant CEO. So lots of different paths to healthcare professionals today in the marketplace if you don't want to practice. Uh, obviously, it was very lucrative to them. So they hired us. We beat Goldman, which is very rare today. Honestly, we don't usually beat Goldman Sachs in, uh, in, in when we go out to market. But uh, I really do this. So um, 
We're not too marketing. We got that many. But I'm not telling you the price. We got them twice what they were offered to initially, which was just a huge price. Okay? And up to date today, is the first time when, when, when it was purchased, everybody howled that they overpaid for the price. So that business has grown 20% a year, year in, year out. It's a fantastic business. Today. So I don't know, maybe just to wrap up, how do you value business? You look at public comps, you look at private comps, you look at, you know, truly a business is worth the, the, the cash flow over a certain amount of time, just kind of back today. And then I think, like a lot of us, we would, then we use our judgment what a business is worth. But yeah, it's not, it's not just running the numbers. There's some multiples um, in the marketplace. What's interesting here is businesses that I, that we typically do are usually very high cash flow businesses. 20, 30, 40 percent cash flow. Uh, no capex. Information. Smart, smart products. It's not a lot of capital. It's not building much. You're using intellectual capital. And typically, they're recurring revenue models. So you're paying once, and then you got a subscriber, or you got a client. They're paying year in, year out. So it's a great model. Software deals today can be for three to five times revenue in my world. This is a, this is a very good price. You'll see it on the left hand corner. Strategic still dominate, which makes sense. A strategic buyer should be able to pay much more than a financial buyer in this space. Strategics don't innovate. They can't innovate. They're just not risk takers. So they'll typically want to buy smaller companies that are innovating, doing something unique, and then do what they do well. Strategics are very good with capital. They got people around the world. They can take what someone has built at 30, 40 million revenue and get it to 250 million revenue. But they couldn't go, they can't go from zero to 30. The guy in the corporate development the department is not going to take a risk to go out and build a company to change medicine. It's got a budget, it's got a responsibility, it's got a nice safe paycheck. They're not risk takers. You'll see here on this side, where's the deal falling by the world? HIT. Tremendous. Is that what you're going to tell Okay, I'll wrap it up. Okay, so HIT has been tremendous. The business of medicine, the RCM, you see a lot of revenue cycle deals. The business of medicine is huge. There's the clinician side, the the rider side is kind of done, but on the business of medicine, it's tremendous amount of deal flow. This is just some of the public comps that we, the companies we see out here. You see they're trading at very high multiples. And this is what, typically what we do. There's lots of ways to do deals. You can do a one-on-one -on -one deal. You can do a, a low compensation. We think auctions maximize value. And you can do a public auction, because we don't see too much. Hopefully that was helpful.